Hi, we're live. So today we were experimenting with the YouTube live streaming version. And in fact, it looks like the Google Hangouts, um, all the Google Hangouts uh, coding has just been sort of imported over into YouTube. So this is actually much easier than I feared. Yay, because I totally didn't want to stop doing this. And, <laughs> and this is Diamond World Building, and I'm Juliet Wade. And today we're talking about hats, which should be fun. Other head coverings too, I thought. What? And and general head coverings. Oh, the things yes. you put on your head. <laughs> yep. yep. So all, there are all kinds of things that we put on our heads. So this is going to be interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I want to talk a little bit about why people put things on their heads. Because there are lots of reasons. Um, I'll 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 start by saying. I wear this hat almost constantly. I wear it basically every day in the summer. And it's because I was told to <laughs> by my optometrist who said, if you don't want to get cataracts from, um, from UV exposure, you should wear a hat all the time. So um, protection from the sun is a big reason why we wear hats. Um, yes, also from the rain, mm -hmm. also from the wind, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, are they always protection? No, they're also fashion. They're also fashion. Oh, okay. Definitely. Fashion. <laughs> yeah. And religious, um, uh, and religious. And in fact, you know, I was thinking about the religious use of hats and other head coverings. And I was like, what is the what is the motivation behind that? And do you know, Morgan, because you have more experience this, with this than I do, I think. Is it to protect yourself or is it to humble yourself? The, for, I'm not too clear on, on the mend. I think it's probably uh, for humility, um, but I'd, I would have to do actually more than two minutes of reading on that or, you know, ask my husband. It's cool. Women cover their hair that married women in particular cover their hair. Um, unmarried women are not required to. Uh -huh. um, so that's, hmm, I'd have to go back and, and look at the veiling of a bride to be Oh yeah, that's kind of it's not. Sure. I mean, you cover your head and you cover your hair because you're married, except that was early on and I'm gonna stop rambling. Um, but it's, it's a thing to look into. Um, yeah, um, I think I think veils on brides are actually uh, really interesting because that is a form of, of head covering, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think Che makes a good point in the chat bar. She says that hats also indicate your status and your job. And I and will tell you. Job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You postman. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, postman. <laughs> part of a uniform. Mm -hmm. Uniform hats. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, like the hats that the that the police wear, the little um, kind of military-ish, but not quite. Hats. <laughs> yeah. and, or uh, helmets. Helmets. Yeah, yeah. they serve a double function, definitely. Construction uh, <laughs> helmets and and firefighters' helmets. Helmets. Um, old old military apparel. Okay, this is. I heard this, and I don't know if it's true, but that the design of the walk was also was originally it was like a helmet you cooked in and then it became a cooking implement um, and it was based on like the mongols of uh, hager like i say that could be total total urban that could be total myth it could be um, uh, I, but, I have to go and look it up i i do know that i think like soldiers and stuff you would you would you would eat out of your helmet you would cook in your helmet you could eat out of it it was this multi-purpose tool um, your hair might get sticky, though. That, well, well you washed it out. Yeah. If you um, had okay. your World War One tin hat, mm -hmm. you know, didn't necessarily afford a lot of protection mm -hmm. from, say, getting hit over the head or shot, mm -hmm. but you could cook and wash in that, and the whatever they have now, I'm thinking no. On no. The hand, they have, Definitely you know, not. They have different provisions yeah. for, well, provisions. But I mean, yeah. I think that's actually, that's actually really interesting, right? Because I mean, 
you kind of do have to carry a hat with you, uh, carry a, a cup with you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're if you're marching off on long campaign, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. The idea that you'd be able to cook and wash in your in your hat <laughs> is kind of delightful. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and so I think there are also um, there are also social groups that are defined by hats. I, I want to throw in the uh, those those great bishop miters that oh. you know the giant wacky like the that is, that's designed to stand out in a crowd. Oh yeah, um, yes. that you know a, a lot of those and that also sort of I almost wonder if a lot of priestly sort of headgear started as simply a way to stand out mm. and be seen. Um, but I mean I don't know I'm sure there's somebody who knows the actual history of all these. No doubt. Um, crazy. Yeah, but path. you know what? This is this is a good way to get people going and doing their own research too. We can't mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> we cover everything, and and half the thoughts that we have, we can't. You know, like we haven't pursued. But it's great to sort of get those threads started. I always figure. Um, let me see. That's a good hat. This is a this is an Australian hat. Oh. Yeah, it's an Akubra. And I'll see if I can show you. This is the Akubra Stradbrook, Stradbrook hat. Oh, my. Is that is Akubra a brand? Yeah, you can see it on the inside here. Oh. oh. Very fancy logo. Yeah, it's a very fancy, yeah, very fancy hat. Um, imperial quality. <laughs> tells you when the, tells you when it was established, right? Definitely. Um. Uh, British Empire stuff, uh, and this is this is called the Stradbrook hat. But it but it's interesting that a lot of hats actually have special names, right? Um, yeah. And and I would have to say the fedora has taken on a whole new meaning <laughs> in recent years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, they're such cool hats too. They are. They're very, they're very, I mean, I mean, that Stradbrook hat is very similar to a fedora, so, yeah. you know. I would uh, almost say closer to a trilby, which is a shorter brim. Yeah, it's um, uh, the trilby. It's very cute. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's great that, that hats have names. There's <laughs> something I about know. it. Which I wish I knew more of them. It tells us something also about, you know, how people thought that, used to at least think about them that they were just as varied and um, objects of fashion I guess as yep. yeah and this one you can probably see it better if I do like this this is a cloche huh, never seen one oh, but I turned it up and it has my yeah. it has my TiVo pin on it <laughs> <laughs> okay because my husband works at TiVo Ah, oh. now this makes sense. I was like, well, why does Tivo make pins? <laughs> because people work there. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Um, yeah, and so and and hats can be made from all sorts of different things too. So felt is a very common material. Yeah. The the akubras are actually made of felted rabbit fur. Oh wow. Fancy. Yeah, yeah. that is fancy. Um, Very fancy. Well, and that's what all those, um, I think it, it was for, for many years, the, the, um, the, the European beavers were almost extinct Yeah. Uh, by the time, and then they moved fur trading a lot to the Americas, which had this huge, you know, to the European vision, untapped resources, and it was beaver felt. Yeah. drove this huge um, this huge corporate enterprise in Canada mm -hmm. that it, expanded. It, it went coast to coast. Yeah. It had a lot and, to do with the, ex the initial exploration, I think, in certain places. My cat is oh. not. <laughs> All right. So this is also an Akubra. Mm -hmm. This is sort of like the... Uh, oh! Yeah, that's like the oh, what's this? The Australian hat. Crocodile <laughs> Dundee yes, hat. Crocodile Dundee hat. This is the hat, <laughs> this is the hat that's going to keep rain off you. 
<laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. You can actually you can actually go out walking in a downpour in this hat and not get your head wet. That is impressive. Yeah. It it's again made from the rabbit felt. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Those are some I pretty would have waterproof rabbits. Wool actually from Yeah, I, I, that kind of waterproofing I would have guessed wool felt. Um, well, you know, it's funny, but it is. It is. It's the rabbit fur felt. And I don't know if they treat it or anything like that, but I just think it's really, really dense. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. You know, and has the properties of, of fur. Um, so Which keeps the animal dry. It's, it it's, smells bad. It's interesting because it soaks in a bit, but then at a certain point just starts running off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the shape, um, when you can tip the, the brims, what does yeah. that yeah. Now, how much pooling do you get in that pool in the top of the hat? <laughs> it's a question. Uh, I don't know, but all you have to do is look down. <laughs> <laughs> Make your own rain. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. 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 So, um, so Chase saying, you know, Europe, there was a hat that went with every job. You know, the, there have been periods of time when you just didn't go out without a hat. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up, and I'm I'm curious. Uh, I should have done research on this. Why did that change? You know, when did what? Is there anything that correlates, or is that just purely a um, thing actually, that happens I, occasionally? I think what some of what happened was the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. Um. The the uh, uh, there were there was just that sort of tectonic shift in in people and upward mobility and people could pick their jobs more. They didn't have to be stuck with it. Manufacturing made making hats easier. They, they became fashion statement rather than job association, aside from probably the clergy, um, <coughs> you know, but like, you know, at some <coughs> point, you know, like in the 1800s, up, up through like the twenties or so hats were everything. And then, it just became less and less and less and less as you get into like the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and people were still wearing them a lot. And then in modern times, everybody threw that out the window. I think especially in the 60s, everybody completely disassociated. Well, it could have been part of that whole back to nature thing. Yeah. Yeah. The 60s were just the 60s. Well, I you mean, know. I mean, of course there were causes. I just think that the 60s, you know, big term changes in a lot of things is what I'm there, saying. Yeah, there yeah. were a lot of changes. Also, I mean, you want to, like, because hats have such social significance, you want to make sure that you're, if you're going to wear a hat, you are wearing the hat that, that presents you the way that you want to be presented. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, Makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's making a statement of some sort. Uh -huh. um, and, you, you you know, if you're not fluent in hat, you should probably be careful. <laughs> yes. Well, so I think there's a, there's probably a split, right? Um, mm -hmm. Hats, hats used to be a thing that were created by individuals as, as they were artistic yeah. objects. Yeah. And, and then uh, what Che was talking about, the Industrial Revolution made it, you know, easier just to turn out hats. Um, and now you get hats like this. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you do. Yeah. The and and what is this for Keep anyway? Well, eyes. I guess it's to shade your eyes from the sun, but it doesn't help yeah. your ears. <laughs> No. Well, I mean, it is it is a baseball hat. It was a hat originated by baseball for baseball. Yeah. And I guess maximizing um, visibility while still giving you some shade or probably something and like that. Um, because I don't you know, have I, to I, be able to you have to be able to hear as well. Which, you know, so your ears don't need protection from anything. You have to be able to hear the the instructions Umpire. and the communications from your teammates yeah. or your coworkers, if you are wearing a team hat for, because it, it, as, if you wear one of those as, as a job, like 
you know, the guy who comes by and checks your meters, that's part of your uniform, and it's basically this a, is a team, team hat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Team hat too. They're still showing affiliation. It's just with a different uh, tone. Yeah. Well, it's it's hockey, <laughs> though, duty. also. So it's, it's hockey, like, it's, so it's, it's a, a winter older. hat. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a winter hat. Um, so, which, I mean, obviously, hockey <laughs> winter. Um, yeah. Ice. Right. And um, uh, what's with propeller beanies? Do you guys even know? Boy. <laughs> No, 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 that, that started know. as some kind of kid hat, like, yeah, I want to people... say like 30s or 40s or something, because you always see like old, old photographs of like the kid with like the propeller. I think it was just somebody decided like, like, you know, like a wind, you know, like, you know, oh, the world. Wind egg. Yeah, with that. And then yeah, they stuck it on a hat. Always, it would be fun for the kids or whatever. Yeah. And then. Um, and then what? I'm not. I don't think I've ever seen them outside of that context. Well, the Tweedledee and Tweedledum were wearing them. Yeah. In, in the Wonderland, in, in the animated version, at least. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think there was a mention in the book. Hard to I'm know. To remember. To they, were, they were in the illustrations. I'm trying to remember oh, the really. illustrations, and I that may they might have actually had those. Yeah. Oh, really? I know they had some sort of hat. Maybe I'm misremembering. Whimsical, it's been years. Just whimsical hats. Yeah, it's been years. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Oh, they do look like they might have them, but let me huh. look. I'm looking. I'm 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 searching for the Tennille illustrations. Yeah, they, yeah do have, they do have a sort of beanie on. Okay. Um, but it doesn't look. It looks more like a bicolored version of a cricket cap. Hmm. That would that would pro that would make a lot of sense. Oh actually. yeah. Uh, let's sure. see. I mean, it being a British book, that's yeah. What would it doesn't have. Sort of... um, how can I? How can I share this with you? <laughs> Good question. Link in the chat. Oh, or... Um, let me see. So, here's an interesting thing potentially. Yeah. If you um, look at. The the yarmulkes that you you the quote that I you order, it. ah, Yay. For, yeah. Um, if you need to, to order the you know, hundred or a couple hundred, yeah, quotes, yeah. go with your uh, your primita. Like the one. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like the ones they always have at the entrance to this sanctuary. But never mind. Yeah, um, those end up being leftovers from various primitas. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> if you dig through, you look inside. Um, shoot, we used to have a drawer full of them. Oh, wow. Um, one moment. They're, they are the same seamed construction because I think that's probably very simple um, to to the, the uh, standard beanie there. I thought we had a drawer full of them, and I can't find them. So I'm going to um, pass on what Morgan said in the chat bar, which was the protagonist in Howl's Moving Castle made hats. Very true. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I remember that. And they I had a lot of fun in that movie. <laughs> they did. Milliner. Yeah. Um, I also remember, um, just, in, it's uh, this could be interesting, um, kind of as a different way of looking at hats as culture and religion. Um, when I had my bat mitzvah, my dad gave me the... Um, Oh God! It's been so long. Uh, the yarmulke that he got for his bar mitzvah, which you know, traditionally women don't wear those. So that's kind of a statement about our our liberal version of our Jewish religion about being Reformed Jews. Right. Um, is is you know appropriating that symbol for women, sort of. Mm. I found the uh, a couple of them. I found the one from that's my funny. daughters, my kids' bat mitzvah, which is. Oh yeah. So I'm not going to put on over there, but it's um, the same construction. Yeah. Uh, because you can do that. You can do it in multiple colors, or you can do the same color, but it's the same construction. Hmm. And, and then, there's no brim, right? No. 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 They never no. have a brim. It's kind of like the the little cap that the Pope sometimes wears. Yeah, it's you just can't. a circle on your head. Yeah. You this, mm -hmm. But it's name and date. It says about mitzvah of, and then the date. Wow, that was late. Um, 
Uh, but you can also get them made if you want to spend a little more money out of suede. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. For the same thing. Slightly different construction, still seemed. Um, yeah, it's still that but, sort of basic triangle, um, triangle yeah. theory. <laughs> yeah, but, it, that, but that's it's, how you get that's how you get curvature in fabric. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're learning that, that stuff. It's, so that's it's, but it's I think very that's, practical, and you can see like they could have easily been made once upon a time as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could make them very easily. And I'm actually. Yeah. It's, it's why you can get a couple of hundred for something that is not going to make a um disaster in your wallet uh, yeah. yeah 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 um you know i'm i you know there there have been a lot of types of hats over the year that represent Judaism, and some of them have been like imposed. I'm trying to remember where it was in Europe and when that there was a certain type of hat that i that was like required of jews so so that the Christians could identify them, and then of course you've got the Hasidic people with their kind of um, their brimmed hats that I don't know how to describe. But, you know, it makes me wonder, where did the yarmulke come from and when? Hmm. There's and one story that says, and uh, no, I closed that one. Um, one of the very popular, well-respected uh, scholars said, mm -hmm. God is always over my head. And he wouldn't walk more than four cubits without covering his head to indicate that and of course since he wouldn't do it nobody else would so yeah um but that's one story that i just yeah i just myself. i also mean like specifically which there have been you know where did the yarmulke specifically come this from not just head covering not just head coverings but like this specific kind of head covering hmm. oh here it is yes i finally found it well, you know, it's really interesting, and I'm I'm currently looking since I have figured out how to share screens. <laughs> uh, I'm actually looking. There are some really good infographics um, about different kinds of head coverings throughout the world, mm -hmm. um, and I don't really want to pick them off of Pinterest because uh, yeah, not the greatest size sort size size. Source um, citing, yeah, that. But, but on the other hand, um, on the other hand, this is very interesting. So let me see if I can show it to you. Um, so if you actually, if you actually Google um, women's head coverings of different religions, and this one happens to have multiple exclamation points. Um, <laughs> But, but the point being that, that head coverings are common throughout the world for religious purposes, right? Um, and, and, you know, I mean, there's so many different types of head coverings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's something interesting there is that the, the Mennonite coverings yeah. are actually less shit, are um, less coverage. Yeah, in those pictures, which is you know a very small sample, than yeah. many of the others, and they don't. I mean, they 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 look to me more like the the. You have two boxes the in the uh, vestibule at our, our synagogue. There's one that has a selection of kippot left over from various bnei mitzvah, um, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. <laughs> if you look in to see what the label is, it's tiny pieces of history and the other box is, is the sort of lace circles that women and a bunch of bobby pins so you just, yeah women can just technically your head is covered and you have to if you're going to go up on the bima you have to cover your head i only do that okay. if i'm up on the bima for some reason um i just don't i don't cover my head see i, I actually Sarah doesn't either <laughs> Hmm? I actually did not know that. That's interesting. Um, and it brings to mind um, what the female rabbi at my synagogue when I was a kid did, which was she never wore one of those. She wore the, um, the kippot or the, the Are, yamka. And um, I don't think we even had the lace things. I'm not sure. Hmm. Our, our, uh, the woman who's the uh, 
school director, religious school director, and the rabbi um, is a rabbi now. Oh, cool. Uh, he oh, wears a, a, a kippah. Now, the Rebetzin, the rabbi's wife, has, our regular rabbi's wife, has this collection of hats, or did when we were all a little younger, that was just yeah. incredible. And they're just these amazing hats. Flowers and, and big fancy things. Church um, hats, but for some dogs. They were <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, kinda. They were they were fun. And she wasn't she had fun with them. Which is which is nice. Yeah. It's it's I'm, it's an important uh, angle on the um the kind of required hat that it's still part of how people express themselves. Mm -hmm. Um you hear about women in Saudi Arabia, or at least something I read long ago, uh, putting ornaments on their um, oh gosh, burqa I think is this is the the type of garment they wear. Yeah. There. Yeah. Um, so even when it's required, pe people will express themselves through it and will have different attitudes towards towards it. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I mean, there are a lot of complex issues surrounding how people react to different types of head coverings because I yeah. mean right now we have Islamophobia and all this kind of stuff. What what people are reacting to is um, these these new historical associations with particular social groups, right? And then okay. seeing the seeing the head covering or seeing the particular form of dress as an indicator of that social group, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, Ascot Let's see. I'm. I am. Um. I actually. I am. I'm. I'm fishing around on the internet and and actually trying to pull up some, because the screen sharing is my new thing today. Yeah. And um, um. The the ascot. It's it's a it's a montage of, um. Those, British, British hats, sort of in all their amazing glory. Um. Because you know how, I, I don't know, people like kind of made fun of the royal wedding and everybody's showing up in those. I think, is it Tom Hardy hats? Um, mm -hmm. I know I know who you mean. Um, yeah. Um, um, let me, give me just a sec. I, I'll find it. Wait, is, is he an ascot a tie? No, royal ascot is a, um, is, is a race. It's a horse race. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, nice. and basically, yeah. that's, uh, the thing that you do is that you wear the most amazing hat you can possibly come up with yes. to this to this event. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm gonna see a royal. Yeah, so why yeah. Is there it's a... it's just it's it's amazing to watch. I mean, some of them are ridiculous. Some of them are gorgeous. Um, some are both. Um, uh, yeah. So so and... all the. Oh my gosh! <laughs> is, yeah. the tie, is the tie also related? I wonder to to the race. I don't know. Well, it, but it, but it, yeah, but the hats. Now I'm remembering. I've seen. All right, the, so the let hat. me see if I can show you this hat that that I googled. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's some um God who is I I can't. Almost got it. it. Um, I know who was on. Out, you guys. Philip Tree <laughs> or Tracy. So that's that's, that's the, it. <laughs> that's the ascot hat right there. Yes. Oh my yes. goodness. That's yes. Yes. Philip uh, Tracy is an amazing hat designer. Yeah. Um and and he his stuff was all over the royal wedding and everybody's like, ah oh, ha ha, what's up with these British hats? But it's like still a thing there yeah. that they wear hats. And one one other place, like in the U.S., I know, and I don't know if everybody knows this. Probably people do. I don't know, but I shouldn't. Um, I, I lived in Savannah, Georgia, yeah, um, for a while because I was going to college there, and um, and you could still like there were whole stores, not quite whole stores, devoted to it, but like window displays for hmm. the church hats. Yes. Here's another one. Um, wow. <laughs> That's so. That one's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So like, it is, yeah. But it's so also the, bizarre. So yeah, I mean, are, like, but I mean, um, that's what ascot church. is about: is pushing the yeah. boundaries of what actually constitutes a hat, right? So like couture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah there are there are couture hats. There are couture hats. They're they're handmade, probably one of a kind. Some of them. Um, 
beautiful. This one here, this one looks, looks a little bit more like what you would consider to be a hat. <laughs> um, come on, come on you. Uh, we? Just while we have a short break um, in the conversation, I just wanted to bring up wigs. This one. Um, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yes, that's that one's a little bit more like a hat that is extreme as opposed to just I have a thing on my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it is pretty. <laughs> but on the other hand, um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna um mess with you guys just a little bit. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Sharing is fun. But check this out. This is a this is actual actually a traditional Alsatian uh, headwear hmm. from from the Alsace region of France. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then another one. This one is um, from also from France. It's from Brittany, and um, it's uh, Breton traditional headwear. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah. So like um, there's all different kinds of I mean <coughs> so I mean things that we would consider extreme are not necessarily all so different from either, though. I mean some of them are the sort of traditional uh traditional festival wear in yeah. certain areas of of Europe or other yeah. places. Um I also have this one, which is so fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to give you this one. This is a Bulgarian woman wearing an oh. amazing piece of headwear. It's pretty gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, all I'm trying to say is this is just a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it is. I mean, it, it's, it's really fun to – just look at all these various possibilities, right? Because mm -hmm. I guess we get so used to people not wearing hats very much that so we forget how much variety mm -hmm. there is. There, I mean, there's actually one I'm going to talk about. Morgan's going to roll her eyes uh, because it's the Monster Blood Tattoo series by DM Cornish, which I talk about probably way too much. Um, but <clears throat> That whole culture, it, it is very important to have a hat, and it's mostly uh, tricorns, these tricorns, and very tall ones. There's ones that are called the thrice high. Where are we talking and about, Jane? It's, it's the Monster Blood Tattoo series by DM Cornish. Okay. And the... The, he, the, the, the main character, Rosamund, loses his hat in, in the first book. And and he comes across this woman who's a monster hunter, and she keeps making kind of jokes about what are you doing in, on the wilderness without a hat. Mm -hmm. And then it, it actually like sort of his his losing of hats becomes a running gag uh, throughout the rest of the three books, where she's always like, why why do I always find you without a hat? <laughs> um, kind kind of thing where where it's like it, it it actually kind of is not really a plot point, but it just becomes this thing. Right. Um, and that, you know, because it, it is obvious that everybody wears hats. Right. In this society. And you don't really go out a lot without a hat. Or, you know, at least in certain professions. So, like, to find him without his hat mm -hmm. is, is like this thing. Um, well, I mean, and it, it was kind of charming. And I've, I'm not sure I've ever really seen hats made such a point of in, in a book. Uh, before. Yeah, I mean, I don't use hats. I don't use hats in my barn world because people don't live out in the open air, and so unless they brought their unless they brought their hat tradition down with them into the city, <laughs> then um, which they basically didn't. There's really no reason why you'd have to wear a hat unless you were actually caving somewhere, um, yeah. which you want to wear a helmet and probably mm. a light. <laughs> but um <clears throat> but yeah i wanted to go back the miners helmets with lights exactly exactly morgan you're having a conversation by yourself here <laughs> i want to get caught up random with things you. because i think um i think you brought up um seek head coverings which are uh, is a great thing to bring up 
um, cause we hadn't covered that yet. Um, the thing I noted, it, the thing I quoted there particularly is that the turban is required for men and women, which is, is different, uh, different. Huh. Is it the same? Like, do they general? Do you know if the requirements and or the practice use the same type of turban? I I don't. The, that is, I just checked the the, the Wikipedia, so that's the part. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's let's covered. Let's say we should do some more research. Do some <laughs> more, more yeah. we think um, definitive it is, statements. It's yeah. very interesting. Um, well, you know, and that was actually speaking of speaking of the use of of head coverings in fiction, that was a, a pretty big um, device in the movie The English Patient, if you remember mm -hmm. that one. I haven't seen it. Uh, I have Well, not. don't um, don't see it unless you're prepared to be emotionally completely <laughs> Yeah, I, I have heard a little <laughs> about it, so oh, yeah. it's, no, it's, I don't know. I, I kind of have a different view of that movie. It was kind of like, oh, good God. Are you kidding me? Fine. Well, you, um, have to, you have to, if, if you have a premise problem, yeah. then, then you'll well, do no, it, was, it was like so tear jerky, romantic that like at a certain point, I like, I sort of like shoot past tear jerker romantic into oh good grief. Um, uh, that was yeah. So 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 clearly so, the movie lost Che, but it didn't lose yeah. me. So be careful yeah. with it because yeah. because it's just heartbreaking if it if is. you don't it's, want it's, to be completely jaded yes. with life. Um, yeah, it's it's a heartbreaking romance if you're if you're um in in the right frame of mind, I guess, or if you yeah, if or or if you really like that sort of thing or so. Sort of but the point about it, it was, me and my mom were kind of rolled our eyes at. <laughs> <laughs> the point about it was that they actually had a thing going on. Um, they had, they have a backstory and a front story, and the front story is about um, people in the Second World War. I think it was Second World War, wasn't it? Um, or was it the first? One of those things. Oh, uh, I think it might have been the first. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to commit to that. But anyway, um, I think. Shoot. No, it has to have been the second. Anyway, yeah, let's not worry about two. that. World War Two. Yeah, World War II, thank you, Morgan. Um, Google comes in handy. Um, basically, there was a nurse who ends up taking care of this guy who's known as the English patient who's been completely, like, he's, he's scarred all over his body and half dead. Um, but he, she ends up having a romance with a guy who is a Sikh uh, uh, bomb squad guy. Um, which is, I mean, cool. <laughs> um, and, and he's an interesting character, you know, and, and he's taken his life in his hands to defuse bombs and, and stuff like that. Um, but they do a thing where they have him take off his turban at one point because the two of them, you know, are, it's just sort of, it's a sort of an intimate moment kind of thing. Um, but I thought that was interesting. Um, and not what some, not something I had seen in a lot of films. Um, so yeah. Um, and then there's of course H Hatter's Madness, which we haven't even touched on. Mercury, right? Yeah. 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 I forgot what it was used for, but. Belting. Depending. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure why they used it in the felting, but um, it, yeah, it it did something very particular, and it was used commonly. And this was before people knew mercury was so poisonous. Right, and I mean, so back in the Civil War era, people thought mercury was actually a medicine. Yeah, yeah. they mm -hmm. they need to stop doing that with like mercury radiation, because you know yeah. there was a period where yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, well, mercury has always had, I think, very sort of mysterious qualities for people. So yeah, it's been salt. a thing all throughout medicine, and yeah. like, or you know, what passed for medicine, you know, a thousand years ago or whatever, you know, um, you know. So it's kind of always been a thing, but it was just it it, it had a very specific use in in hatting and or millinery. Mm -hmm. Millinery. 
Yep, which was terribly bad for Hatters. Um, yeah. Um, it's also worth, um, I don't know, going back to Judaism, because why not? Sure. Um, I just wanted to bring up wigs worn by some Orthodox women, um, mm. because they're supposed to cover their hair. And I just thought, I mean, I'm not sure exactly how to talk about it, but it's interesting that they cover their hair with someone else's hair. No, with more hair. <laughs> yeah. Like, does it count? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think s I was just looking it up beforehand, and I think rabbis disagree. But um, it's just interesting what counts, at least to some people, is that their hair is covered, not that they don't show hair. Mm. So I found that interesting. Well, it's mm. like, um, weren't there like, wasn't like, okay, ancient Egypt were like... Yeah, yeah. Poor, poor people had wigs made with like straw or grasses or something hmm. because they couldn't afford the human hair wigs that the rich rich people had like the human hair wigs and could change their hair all the time and then mm -hmm. poor people had to kind of do do Make what they could to emulate the royalty and had like um their their wigs were like made of not human hair. <laughs> maybe maybe I it's know, right? hair or something. I I have to look that. Up. I saw it on a documentary like a long time ago, so I don't remember exactly what they said about it. Um, but I don't know if that does that like does that constitute like a hat or not? Like I'm not sure a wig because a wig is like substitute hair. Well, I mean it, it is in some sense, depends. but it's also there's also a sense of. I mean, if you go back to the to, to the whole function of of head coverings as a form of modesty, what's what makes you feel more exposed than not having hair on your head? Yeah. Right. Um, you, you know. I mean, I think obviously, obviously, we're treading into a whole different region here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah gotta be careful. We did have a whole discussion on modesty at one point, so you can always yeah. go back and have to look at that one up. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. yeah, that was an interesting discussion. Okay. Um, and whether wigs are a fashion accessory or whether they're somehow an indication that you're ill mm -hmm. um, depends yeah. on the culture that you're looking at and the time period too. Yep. Well, I yeah. Because like um, Marie Antoinette wigs of, you know, three feet high and had live oh, birds yeah. in it and stuff. <laughs> oh, that's another animal that has also died in huge quantities for hats are birds, <laughs> feathered feathers. And there's still a problem. Today. I can see somebody objects. <laughs> yes. Yes. My parents' parakeet is over there like, eh. Actually, I'm sure she wants me to do something. Um, but yeah, so it's it's like yeah, um, killing killing birds for feathers for hat feathers um, has has a long tradition, and it's it's a big problem in some places still. Well, for yes. feathered headdresses, yes, like in Papua New Guinea, um, there's a real problem. With the killing killing birds for the feathered headdresses, mm. it's a priority and thing, I'd say. Ex extinction, yeah, yeah. Well, and you know what? Um, over here, Morgan's still doing her little chat bar. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan's like queen of the chat bar today. Um, <laughs> but I think that you bring up a good point, Morgan, which is um, uh, feathered headdresses that we see um, from the various Native American groups um, in the U.S. Um, and how often those get appropriated as fashion. Yeah, when they're basically... Because they're a head covering and they get sort of, um, you know, crossing the cultural borderlines and people say, well, what are hats for anyway? They're for wearing to look cool. And and then, of course... Not there those. Is a whole, not those the, are basically like a medal. Good. Those, yeah, those were those were war bonnets that you got out to go. Yeah, I believe they that stuff. like. I think that like Native American veterans, like army veterans, will will still wear them. Like that'll be a thing. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I mean, the thing is that North American hats, yeah. Um, just because uh, a, a particular type of hat is a fashion thing in in your culture doesn't mean it's a fashion thing in another culture. And you wouldn't just sort of grab a yarmulke and wear it for fashion purposes. Yeah, I hope there, not there's always. a lot of feathered things you can wear if you want to wear feathers. There are a lot of options. Uh huh. For feathers. Um, you know, a, a lot of feather options. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there are all kinds of, I mean, war bonnets, they're, those are definitely a thing, but I even, there are far more functions, um, you know, that are culturally specific and, and really should not, these things should not be moved from one context to the other because of their very specific um, significance within the culture. Um, yeah. All right. Now we are going to list a few more things. Um, fascinators. Yeah. That's a yeah. hat. I guess. It just is sort of like a thing. You stick on yeah. Your head. Yeah. It's they're like the tiny, tiny, tiny hats. They don't so much cover the head as accessorize it. They are. Yeah. They are pure accessory. They're pure accessory. They they serve no practical function whatsoever. But um, they, they do are serve ornament for your function. hair. Well, they're ornament. Yeah, I mean, their their function is to ornament your hair, to ornament your head. Um, yeah. They're often feathered and jeweled. Yeah. Um, so they're they're pretty. They're designed to be pretty. Yeah. Uh, hoods on coats. <laughs> that's not a hat. That's part of the. That's part I think of that's the part going back to the. Um, that's going back to the protect us from the elements. It's yeah. It is pure. It is pure function though. I mean, it is pure function. Oh, I mean, come on. You can have a hood that goes zunk, or you can have a hood that goes. Wah, wah, oh yeah, yeah right, so right. you can make fashionability out of almost anything. Yes, yeah, so the crazy <laughs> cultist hood, right? Uh, like, <laughs> the, or like you know, I know the the gray coats, the big um, the fan the the fantasy hood, which yeah, you know, is a big yeah big cowl big, for big drapey hood, yeah, yeah. I'd but like it like a hoodie is also hood. the monk's cowl. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny, but there's, this is a really, really, I mean, big topic. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. So the fur, a fur lined hood, then you get into, I mean, yeah, it serves a purpose, but then what furs are you using to yeah. line it? You know, yeah. something to keep you warm. Probably. Yeah, but there are a lot of ways to do that. So, is there a statement for which first? It would That's be a question wealth. thrown out. It would be wealth, actually. Um, oh. a, a lot of fashion <laughs> is dictated by wealth. If you had a fox for hood, if you had mink hood, if you know, it was just it was just sort of how much money can you throw at things? But yeah, and I and I think. Um, so, like, whether a hat belongs on somebody's head is a totally different question, right? Like, if you have the money to wear, to purchase a hat, doesn't necessarily mean that other people will accept you wearing that hat, right? Yeah, I mean, there's the whole question of acceptance of, like, people construe any action differently depending on who is doing it. So, you know, <laughs> that you can you can say, well, I'm going to wear this hat because I want to be a part of this group, and you can still nonetheless have somebody go, yeah, you're such a pretender. You know, <laughs> yeah. I can tell you really can't, can't you know carry that off or or whatever it is. So. Well, I I would I would imagine that being like um, so I like like if you're in medieval times and you wanted to. like swindle people if you could afford like some of the bishop gear ah. or something and pass yourself off yeah as something else i i can imagine um 
Well, impersonating like somebody with a very specific job or or cultural qualification, like impersonating a police officer or that kind of stuff, is obviously really, 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 really bad. <laughs> Yeah, you know? yeah, it's like you... stuff you wouldn't want to get caught doing, but but people may have done anyway. Um. If you can get because the uniform caps, say you know, the gas man comes to the door and says, you know, "I need to read the meter that's in your basement." You know, for people whose meters are in their basement, yeah. they look and they say, "Okay, you you're wearing the the gas company uniform, which is the." may or may not be a patch on the the shirt yeah but they'll have the hat right where did they get the hat and they are they really the employees you, well who knows exactly. and that you know that's an entirely different <clears throat> position that's being that might be misrepresented right than something like um you know a high level religious or um political entity yeah, we haven't Buddy. talked about crowns. Should we talk about crowns? Oh, yeah. crowns! Oh my gosh! Ooh. Okay, right. yes, let's tack crowns here on the end because, <laughs> oh my gosh, crowns! <laughs> we forgot. How do we? I don't know. Crowns and tiaras. <laughs> mm. That's a good point. Like, are they fashion? Or are they regalia with tiaras? Well, I mean, crowns. Obviously, real crowns. Oh, real crowns. I'm in the yard. Extremely exclusive in their use, and yeah. and yeah. only such and such a person can wear this crown and and wear it legitimately. Yeah, you yeah. know, and there's like, yeah. I mean, think about think about Disney's Robin Hood and the fact that that the that, that the crown never fit on on the lion. Uh, Prince John. Prince John. John you know. Hmm. Yeah, I will say I think um, people in fantasy, like people, are, like sometimes I think tend to have people wearing crowns a lot more than people generally would have worn crowns. Yeah, because yeah. they're often um, very. It's a, it's a very ceremonial uh -huh. use, but like you would you would put on something if you had like visiting dignitaries, you know, something yeah. that says I am king. You know, ceremonial, you, you, and they're also super heavy. Yeah, it's really like if you're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> Terry Pratchett makes fun of a lot. Oh yeah, um, I remember that. The British Queen does not wear her crown out, but she's always no. wearing a hat. Yep, she is. That's yeah. interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, but the, yeah, the 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 crowns are for your coronation. Another. Um, yeah, Major when, state you, when you perform ceremonies. ceremonies, yeah, when you're performing your duty, you get the crown. When you're out. royally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't also, because, like, what if someone stole it? Because that's also, like, well, uh, yeah. you don't want to have it out all the time in case somebody manages to take it. You want to have that thing locked up pretty good until you need it, because, you know. Pretty hard to like, hawk the whole oh thing, but those jams... <laughs> Well, yeah, and <laughs> the crown jewels. Yep. Yep. But that's also a thing that it's. I mean, for all that it didn't fit the the cartoon Prince John, uh, it's also a thing that is easier to move from one person to the next. If you have, you know, a robe or some other clothing that you would use as a uniform, just to say, okay, well, your father, the king, died suddenly, and now we have to. Fit you for all of his clothes, and you know you're twenty years younger and not as you know, big or you're bigger <laughs> and it doesn't fit. So head size doesn't you need vary. a crown. Well, it's it's, it's <laughs> lasting. It's because if you're gonna do a crown and you're gonna do it out of metal, metal lasts. Sure. Yeah, you know, sure. fabric is gonna get eaten away, but metal and gems last. That's true. That yeah. And that's then also, head size doesn't vary that much. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to look and say, oh, well, obviously, you know, he's, he doesn't yeah. fit in the king's clothes. Like a, a little padding or something. You just yeah. what, did they do when, what, what did they do when the king was like four? Yeah. I, I don't know. Did they, <laughs> I know, I mean, did they have the Did they have the coronation? Well, they, they had have the coronation? Or? Or? Yes. Yeah, yeah, do they, they have the coronation when the king comes of age? They, they would sort of. There would usually be somebody who would 
be in charge until they were old enough. Yeah, but the regent would never wear the crown because that, no. that would no. not be a thing. <laughs> I just meant, like, do no. they have the um, yeah. do they have the coronation then, though, or do they wait until the crown fits, aka when the person's old enough to take over? That from I the don't region. know. That I don't. Know. Yeah, that would You'll be, that would be a thing to research. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we're starting to run over, so <laughs> all right. So you guys are awesome. Uh, thank you for talking about hats with me for Yay. an hour. And, that was fun. And I, I want to tell you that we're going to have a guest author next week Ooh. Um, on Wednesday at 10, our, our normal time. We're going to have a uh, guest author. Carrie Quinn is going to be here, and she is very, very interesting, and she's going to talk about – World building without visual imagination. Um, oh so, my god! Yeah, she's. Um, I, I I'm not sure uh, how she would describe herself, but I know her son is autistic, yeah. and um, she has told me that she doesn't have visual imagination, um, and I so just writes read an article on that. nonetheless. And yeah. I. I wanted to, I thought it would be a pretty fascinating um, angle on the topic of world building because a lot of world building, you know, for people with visual imagination is very visual. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. how, do you oh approach, how do you approach the same problem with that is not in your tool set? Um, and she's going to give us some really interesting insights into semiotics and stuff like that. So, so cool. it should be really cool. Wow. And I hope you guys can make it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Real quick, could you repeat the name? I I, I thought I heard Cherry, but nothing's coming Cherry? up. Cherry? Quinn. The first name again? I'm sorry. I'm writing it down. Okay, perfect. Oh, oh Carrie. Okay. what I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad. It, nice. So um, you will all see it written down <laughs> before too long. I will tweet about it. Um, but in any case, for now, I'm going to stop the broadcast, and we will reconvene next week. All right.